Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to start a simple how to record four, a four track rock song. And today we're going to go over how to record the guitars for a four track rock song. Over here you can see we've got the whole four tracks. We've got the guitar track, bass guitar, drums, and a vocal track which actually has two layered tracks because there's some vocal overlap. And then a final track that it's just for mastering, we're not going to worry about that. So, we go over here to a nice fresh track, set the BPM to what you want. You're going to usually want to use a click track unless you want the beginning of your song to be out of time with the end of your song. So, turn on your metronome, and then we're going to insert a new track and get ready to record some guitar. Now, I assume that you have your sound card all set up. The Ozio driver is the best driver for Windows, but that's really all I can tell you because there are a million sound cards, a million USB audio interfaces, and PCI interfaces like the one that I'm using. So that's not really what I can go into today. But I'm going to assume you have it all set up and you can get sound to be recorded into Reaper. So we're going to right click in the, the track zone here, insert a new track, arm the track, monitor the track. Now, whenever, oh, sorry, and you need to tell it where the audio is coming from. So in this case, mine comes here, and this is what it sounds like. It's not very loud, okay? So, if we start recording, we'll get something like this. So you get the idea. Now we have us a nice guitar track here. Turn off the metronome. Now that doesn't exactly sound like much. Okay, even though I love my Epiphone Les Paul Studio that I'm playing on, it still doesn't sound fantastic. And why is that? Because we don't have any effects, we don't have any amps, we don't have any cabs, we don't have any reverb, delay, we don't have any of that stuff. All we have is the guitar straight into the audio interface. So, how about we add some of those things? If you click on the FX button here, you get the list of all your VSTs and these fantastic JS um, Jesusonic uh, plugins that you can use. Now, in the Jesusonic plugins, there are actually quite a few that pertain to guitar, and they're pretty terrible because they are super, super, super basic. There's a, if we go over here, there's the guitar. You can amp model some basic stuff. You can send your guitar tone to two different amp models. There's a chorus and a fuzz, distortion, flanger, phaser, all your basic guitar stuff that you have. And it works. It's really stable. And if you just need a really quick fuzz or a really quick phaser and you don't want to worry about a whole modeler, then it's a good choice for you. But Today, what we're going to work with is Amplitube. Now, Amplitube is probably the best modeler out there. And recently, with uh, the Amplitube Custom Shop, it's free. When you download Amplitube, you're going to get a limited version of Amplitube. Everything still works, but you don't get all the options that you have. For example, if you want a stomp box, the Amplitube 3 distortion, the only one that's free is the diode overdrive. All the other ones you have to order and pay for, and we're not going to go into that. But, so, with my guitar, what I prefer is no stomp boxes. I like this British tube lead. Uh, in Amplitube, there are actually four amp models. Let's have a listen to them real quick. And the fourth one is a bass preamp, but we're not going to use that one since we're playing with guitar. Okay, so my preferred setup is this British tube lead with a little bit less mid. Uh, for a cab, I like the 2x2 closed vintage. I actually prefer the 2x2 open vintage that Amplitude 2 had, but I have to buy that one if I want that one, and I'm a cheap bastard, so that's not going to happen just yet. And then on the back end, a little bit of digital delay, and I do mean a little bit, just a little bit of feedback, 
a little bit of mix because it builds up quick. And I prefer the left center right delay rather than a stereo or a left right or a mono. Okay, so let's hear what it sounds like with this. There's quite a lot of Maybe there's just a little bit too much delay, but anyway, that's what it sounds like. And once you have that going, you can add, for example, uh, a wah pedal for free. There's also a tremolo, flanger, and a chorus for free. So if you want to use a phaser, for example, you could use the JS phaser, which is very simple and is just a digital phaser. It's not meant to sound like any professional pedals that you can actually buy, but if you don't want to buy one from Amplitube and you need a little phaser, then that's a good one to have. So you have your guitar track recorded. What do you do next? Well, in my personal experience, a little bit of comp, especially on distorted guitar, can go a long way. So if you add in Recomp, Recomp is Reaper's simple digital compressor. Okay and it comes with a bunch of stock presets which can be pretty useful in this one we're just gonna click distorted electric guitar and at the beginning you might want to click auto makeup now auto makeup will do its best to guess uh, the compression settings for you so now it sounds like maybe it's a little bit too loud uh, auto makeup usually does make it louder. Let's hear what it sounds like without the auto makeup on. Okay, sounds pretty good. Now, in addition to all of that, in the end, you can add EQ if necessary. EQ can, uh, it can do a lot of things, especially if you're getting unwanted sounds or you're mixing stuff together and it's starting to sound like mud. And maybe you don't understand what I mean, but if you start mixing, for example, two guitar tracks, a keyboard, and a bass guitar, and they're all playing similar riffs, or even worse, the same riff, you won't be able to distinguish what is what instrument is playing what. They will all come together to make a sludge sound, which, unless that's what you want, isn't good. So we add a little bit of EQ. Re-EQ is um, Reapers. Again, simple, digital EQ. And it has a few for guitar. For example, um, if you're recording a Fender Mesa, I'm not sure if this means that you're recording from one or you just want it to sound like one, or a basic Marshall. Uh, you can also download other ones that give you a little bit more crunch if you need, or you can just do it yourself. I recommend that with guitar, especially if your bass is playing the same riff or a similar riff, that you create a high pass filter and that way your guitar and your bass aren't making mud because they're not trying to fill the same sonic space with the same sound, with the same frequency, sorry. Okay, so we have this guitar track ready to go, and maybe it looks like this now. And over here, we don't even have EQ because I was just making a simple track. Then, when you play it all together with everything else, you get... Not bad. It's starting to sound like a song. Okay. Next time, I'll show you how to record a simple bass guitar track.